Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Darth Chaco and this is my spoiler free review of The High Republic Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. I was fortunate enough to get an advanced copy from Lucasfilm and I'm so thankful because I've been really enjoying The High Republic in general um, and I enjoyed this book as well. But I want to do some housekeeping first. Before I even get started, I want to go over who these books are for. Anyone who loves the Jedi, please <laughs> read these books. Anyone who really loves Qui-Gon Jinn, if that's your, who your favorite Jedi is, or Plo Koon then yeah, this is going to be a great book for you. Um, anyone who watches the prequels and looks at the Jedi and sees the problem, sees how blind they were to certain things and how they really caused their own demise. This is the perfect book because this will show you exactly who the Jedi are supposed to be and how the cracks in the Jedi and the Republic came about because you're starting to see them form. So if any of that interests you, I highly recommend the High Republic books. Um, there was some fear of mine that this was going to be like a diet version of the Old Republic. I can assure you it's not. It's its own thing. It is wonderful. And it even canonizes some things in the Old Republic as well. So just saying that right out the gate. Rising Storm by Kevin Scott is really a continuation of the story that we saw in Light of the Jedi. It really has that large uh, macro feel that's building up this universe, you know, what the Star Wars universe was at this point in time. This takes place a year after Light of the Jedi, so in the wake of that great disaster that, you know, the Jedi had to come and basically rescue everyone, uh, the, the, uh, the galaxy's in shambles. They're still not quite recovered, but... The Republic, led by Lena Sol, is really trying to unify and become a voice for positive change. This has actually strengthened her, her cause more than anything else. So she decides to arrange a Republic fair, invite worlds from all over to come and show the best that they have to offer in order to create that feel of unity. And of course, things go wrong. Things go very wrong. You see, the Nile want to show that they are not a force to be messed with, and they decide to interrupt said fair. The Nile, especially Martian Rowe as the Eye, have really continued to prove themselves to be such unique villains, but capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Jedi because of their tactics, because of how they think and how they fight. Now, they're always kind of stated to be space Vikings, but they're so much more than that, and also, there's a lot of variance depending on which group of them. There are really three different groups uh, that are go under different Tempest Runners, and they mirror those Tempest Runners. Some of them are um, really cautious and quiet and will wait. Some of them do act like barbarians. It's fascinating the variety uh, of villains that we're going to get in this. The Jedi have truly met an interesting match because so much of what the Jedi do is based off of hope. But everything that the Nile does is create fear and chaos. And when these two sides clash, it's 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 truly anyone's game. In this book, we also get to spend some time with some new characters. Um, we spend time with uh, Stellan Geos, like we've never before, seeing what it's like to be a young council member. And really the face of the Jedi for this. Belzedifar comes back. He's still dealing with the losses that he experienced in the previous book. Um, Elzar Man is also here, and God, Elzar Man, I love Elzar so much. He's he is the Qui Gon of this generation, meaning he's the guy that goes rogue and does some interesting things. He has a very interesting way of thinking about and using the Force. We got introduced to a new fan favorite, which is Ty Yorick. Imagine, you know, if you've played the Witcher, <laughs> imagine a, a, a Witcher Jedi. She is uh, a saber for hire and a monster hunter and a uh, former Jedi. Just really interesting character. And I loved seeing her, you know, paired up, um, you know, in, in the difference that she brings to this. And another character that was really interesting to see develop was Lena Sol, the Chancellor herself. Um, we get to kind of develop 
what the Republic is at this time and what factions are in with it and who else is out there. It's a fascinating look at the galaxy. Now, of course, if you're going to have interesting heroes, you got to have interesting villains. Uh, Martian Rowe is proven to be this enigmatic, highly intelligent, very unpredictable villain. And man, I've, I've been loving re reading him. Uh, he's kind of like Moriarty in the BBC's Sherlock. Um, that's really like the closest thing I can, I can say <laughs> uh, to about him. We also get to spend some more time and get to know some more of the Tempest Runners, you know, like Lorna D and Pan Ada, and uh, a new Tempest Runner that ends up joining the mix after the events of the, the last book. If you're going to have interesting heroes, you need fascinating villains as well, and Martian Rowe has that in spades. He's proven himself to be enigmatic, highly intelligent, very unpredictable, and we don't quite know his true goals yet he's using the nile as a means to an end and they know it and that creates interesting tension with the rest of the tempest runners like lorna d and pan ada I, I just i i can't wait to see where this is going this book will break your heart um and it it takes no prisoners uh so if you're looking for something that's like a light read um and is always fun this isn't it if you read light of the jedi you know that there are severe consequences and not everyone walks out of these books okay Whew, it's it's a great one it's it's dark and it'll it'll get you i promise you that now this might be recency bias talking but this right now is my favorite book in canon um I'm going to start creating a tier list so all the books that I've read, whenever I review them, I can throw them all up so you can see where I'm stacking them. And I, I think everyone should read this book if, if you've read Light of the Jedi. Read Light of the Jedi first, um, but read this book. Read this book.